Metal additive manufacturing has a size problem. Typically, if you want to build bigger and bigger parts, you need larger and more expensive equipment. But what if there was a way to expand the build volume of your typical laser powder bed fusion, binder jet, or even DED printer to build larger parts? I'm Stephanie Hendrickson with Additive Manufacturing Media, and in this video, we're gonna look at a technique that enables building larger parts by 3D printing them in pieces and then joining them using a combination of mechanical joining and metallurgical bonding. So this technique was developed by Synergy Molding Technologies, which is part of the Synergy group of companies located in Clinton Township, Michigan. Synergy Molding Technologies supplies tools and dies for injection molding for everything from prototype runs all the way up to full-scale production. And they use a number of different manufacturing processes to do it, including additive manufacturing. Something interesting about Synergy Molding Technologies is that they don't actually own any metal 3D printing capacity themselves. They work with a number of different OEMs and suppliers to have things 3D printed as they need them. And so if it's possible to 3D print molds in smaller segments and then join them together later, that opens up a wider envelope of different machines, different platforms, different suppliers that Synergy can work with. Here's Clay Stevens, the CEO and co-founder of Synergy Molding Technologies. Today in the world of 3D printing, for companies that are 3D printing uh, inserts or trying to 3D print tools, um, the printing limitation is, is quite small for economically viable machines at an achievable, uh, affordable price point. Anyone looking to print today without this technology, looking to print a solid, complete tool greater than, let's say, 16 by 16 square build plate size, uh, would need to move into a larger machine that can achieve the desired results, uh, but at a significantly higher cost. The idea here is to utilize the many different powder bed machines or uh, wire FDM or binder jet machines or mantle equipment that might be out there in the market, uh, underutilized, but still printing the materials that we've standardized, the tool steels that we've standardized. So there are more opportunities for these more affordable, smaller metal 3D printers when you can join those pieces together. Synergy Molding Technologies has developed this idea specifically thinking about injection mold tooling, but there are many other potential applications for this technique that they've developed. Here's how it works. First, the parts are 3D printed using a dovetail geometry featuring these 45 degree bevels. This is the mechanical joining mechanism that will hold these parts together later. The bevels are there to improve the mechanical engagement and also provide good surface area for the metallurgical bonding, which will come later. The parts that you're seeing, these samples in this video, were 3D printed using laser powder bed fusion out of 316 stainless steel. These were made by Trump on their TruePrint 1000 platform, which has a build volume measuring 100 millimeters in diameter by 100 millimeters tall. So perfect example of the type of small format 3D printer that we're talking about here. After printing, the dovetails are a little bit oversized, and so they need to be cut down using wire EDM. For this process, Synergy partners with a company called Falcon Industry to smooth out those surfaces, bring everything into the correct tolerance, and if everything goes according to plan, those dovetails should fit together perfectly at this stage. The next step is the metallurgical bonding. Laser cladding is used to fully enclose that joint and join the pieces together permanently. This step is performed by Synergy Additive Manufacturing, which is a sister company that specializes in laser-directed energy deposition, or DED. Synergy Additive has developed its own DED platform that uses laser line lasers, robots from KUKA and FANUC, and a Fraunhofer material deposition nozzle. In this case, the test piece was clad using 316 stainless steel. Finally, the parts are finish machined and polished to their final surface finish. At the end of all of this, the joined parts should look and behave as if they are one solid piece of metal. With the mechanical joining supported by the laser cladding, we're able to transfer any of the thermal stresses, expansion and contraction that might happen during the molding process and any other physical forces that the tool could encounter. Uh, we transfer that force instead from the weld now into the mechanical joining features themselves and the weld is only trapping that mechanical joining feature to further increase the fidelity of that joint. One thing you might be wondering is why laser cladding? Why not use welding here? Well, because welding and cladding work a bit differently. With welding, you're melting part of the substrate as well as the filler material to create that bond. That can lead to a fairly large heat affected zone in the part, which can introduce porosity or distortion. With 3D printed parts, it can also exacerbate residual stresses that might have been left from the 3D printing process or initiate new sources of stress. All of this can lead to fatigue cracking when the part goes into use later. 
With cladding, you're using a precise laser beam to melt just the surface of the substrate so you can bond the metal wire or powder onto it, which means a much smaller heat affected zone. That means less risk of distortion or porosity. In addition, the microstructure that you get from cladding is much more similar to that coming out of the 3D printing process. So this joint ends up being more uniform and less subject to fatigue cracking. Conventional welding would not allow us to print such thin wall pieces and join them together since there's a dramatically higher amount of heat inputted into the, the welding process, into the substrates. Um, you can see here, this sample was laser clad all the way around. It's 17.4 stainless steel, cladded with 420 stainless. And there's a five millimeter wall thickness with zero warp or distortion. In this case, two 90 degree faces joined together, so no mechanical joining feature, but a great example of the elimination of that, that heat concern. And at the same time, this complete uh, offering eliminates the build box limitations. Building mold tooling or other parts this way has some important potential benefits. We've already mentioned the cost savings. Building smaller parts on more affordable machines is probably going to be cheaper for the end user or customer. Smaller 3D printers are also more ubiquitous, making this a more accessible option if you don't have to go hunt down a large format printer every time you want to make something larger than the typical build volume. There's also the potential for lead time reduction. 3D printing can be a time savings over machining or tooling based processes like casting, and that increases if you don't have to be particularly choosy about the build volume you need for your metal part. Plus, this strategy makes it possible to build multiple segments of the part simultaneously, whether in the same printer, in the same build, or spread across multiple machines at once. The ability to tap into that existing capacity at the same time across the country uh, takes our lead times dramatically down from what it would be for machining from billet a uh, solid uh, solid tool single piece tool um, that allows us to print you know in theory if there's a 40 hour print time on a single build build box of any one machine uh, it doesn't matter how many sections there are core and cavity to the tool we can print all of those sections in theory on the same day at the same time and within 72 hours have the complete tool printed and in-house for final finishing and uh, joining together. So taking this idea even further, the combination of mechanical joining and metallurgical bonding could be used to enable larger 3D printed parts, such as things like airframe structures or rocket components. It could also be used for repair work, like refurbishing surgical tools or repairing things that get damaged in the field, like armored vehicles or offshore drilling equipment. Clay and Synergy Molding Technologies see this as a way to expand the footprint, expand the effectiveness of metal 3D printing, and also to encourage manufacturers to think about the things they're producing in a more modular way. You don't have to throw out the entire system just because one part of it has been damaged, and you can think about production in these smaller segments versus having to build the entire thing in one go. If you'd like to learn more about Synergy Molding Technologies and its sister companies, check out the feature article on additivemanufacturing.media. And if you're interested in more 3D printing technologies and applications, subscribe to the Additive Manufacturing Media YouTube channel, and you can also sign up for The Build Up, which is our twice-weekly newsletter where we get into all of this stuff on a much more frequent basis. You can find links to all of that in the show notes. Thanks for watching.